Okay, so before we can have a look at the thoracic cavity, we're going to need to remove this limb. In order to remove the limb, we're going to need to cut through the latissimus dorsi, the trapezius muscle, the underlying rhomboideus muscle, the omotransversarius muscle, the brachiocephalic muscle, the pectoralis muscles, and then the serratus ventralis. You can see some of it here and some of it up here. Okay. Now in the dog, that, those would be the muscles you'd need to transect to do a limb removal, except you would not need to cut through the serratus ventralis because as you reflect that limb or abduct that limb, that serratus ventralis is going to separate from that serrated surface of the scapula real easily, so you won't really need to transect the serratus ventralis. Okay, so we're going to do that and remove that limb, but before that I want to talk about the auscultation of the lungs here. Okay, so for our auscultation of the lungs, our cranial border is going to be the triceps brachii muscle, and then our epaxial muscles are going to be our dorsal border. Okay. Now here's our costal arch. So we can count in 13, 12, 11 ribs. From the more dorsal portion of the 11th rib down to the about the 6th costochondral junction. So our elbow is going to be about at the 5th intercostal space. So at about here, we can draw kind of a sloping line up, and that's going to be where our lungs are going to be sitting. So they'll be sitting here, and here, and here as far as our auscultation limits. Okay? For our puncta maxima of listening to the heart, in the ruminant, the heart's going to sit a little more upright. And so for the pulmonary valve, we would tuck under the arm at about the low on the third intercostal space and the third rib about there and then we go high about the fourth rib and fourth intercostal space for the aortic valve and then low again in the fourth intercostal space to fifth rib for the mitral valve or the left AV valve okay so let's remove this limb. So before we take this limb totally off, I want to show you a few things here. So here we see nicely the rhomboideus muscle here. We see the serratus ventralis, the cervical portion here. And we can look under here and see that continue as the thoracic portion of the serratus ventralis. And then in this in this cluster here is going to be our nerves and vessels going to the limb. Okay. Also notice right here before I remove the limb we reflect our brachiocephalic and our omotransversarius and there we have the nice big superficial cervical lymph node. Okay. And I just wanted to show you this once again going from the manubrium up to the medial surface about the level of the shoulder of the brachiocephalic is our subclavius muscle in the ruminant. Here we can also see the external abdominal oblique muscle attaching along the ribs here and then it's got aponeurosis down and through here. Okay and then I reflected the pectoralis muscle there. So this is our external abdominal oblique, which we will probably have to cut along here and reflect out of our way as well to get into that thoracic cavity. So here now we have the limb removed. We can see the stumps of our latissimus dorsi, trapezius, rhomboideus, brachiocephalic, omotransversarius, there's our superficial cervical lymph node, and our serratus ventralis. 
Now we're going to have to further reflect these muscles to expose our thorax. Um, something else we can see here, the scalenus muscle here, one of our muscles of inspiration. And we can reflect these guys up like this. And we see our iliocostalis system here, our longissimus system here, partially covered by our splenius muscle, our splenius muscle being part of the transversospinalis system up here. Okay? Okay, just because I could, I decided when I reflected the serratus ventralis muscle that I would reflect the splenius muscle and that better exposed our iliocostalis system, our longissimus system, and then our transversospinalis system. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this semispinalis capitis here and give us a nice view then of our nuchal ligament. So this portion here that's continuous with the supraspinous ligament is the funicular portion of the nuchal ligament and then down here is the laminar portion of the nuchal ligament. So I just wanted to show you that. Let's have a look now here at the intercostal muscles. So enter between costal ribs. Okay, you notice that the external intercostals, its fibers are going caudoventrally, just like the direction of the external abdominal oblique. And it's a very thin muscle, so we had to cut very thin. And you can see now the internal intercostal muscles, its fibers are going to be going cranioventrally, which is going to be same as the internal abdominal oblique. So these muscles are both active in inspiration as well as expiration. So here we've cut the ribs just below the apaxial muscles and then up along the costochondral junction from the second back to the eleventh and reflected it. And here we can see on this surface the parietal pleura or the costal parietal pleura and you can see on the caudal border of each of these ribs a nerve in a vessel. Okay, so those are the intercostal arteries and nerves. That's important to remember there on the caudal aspect because if you need to do a puncture into the thorax you don't want to run into those guys so you want to go cranial to the rib not caudal to the rib. Okay, so that's the costal parietal pleura here we can see the diaphragmatic parietal pleura, the diaphragm. Notice the diaphragm coming all the way out about to the sixth intercostal space. So here we have the dome of the diaphragm. Okay. And when I made my cut here, what I did is I made sure that from this point caudally that I stayed cranial to what is known as the line of pleural reflection. Because we have this costal pleura and diaphragmatic pleura coming together here, reflects off the ribs onto the diaphragm. So that's the line of pleural reflection running right about here. So here's our costal arch, our line of pleural reflection here. Now even when the lungs are totally filled. It's not going to fill up all that space. And so they refer to that space in between as the costodiaphragmatic recess. Okay, that's a good place to go if you're going to get pleural fluid without putting the lungs in danger of your needle. Okay, we have the left lung, which consists, just like in the dog, of a cranial and caudal portion of the cranial lobe and a caudal lobe. Notice also just like in the ox there's going to be distinct lobulation 
going on. So we have lobation and lobulation. Okay, lobulation are tinier and they're separated by an interstitial connective tissue. Okay, or an interlobular connective tissue. Now we reflect that up, we can see the heart here. It's still in its pericardial cavity with some fat. It's within the mediastinal parietal pleura. And we can see that we have thymus here, which we expected because we did see thymus up here still in the cervical region. And so we also have some here cranial to the heart as we would see in other species. Okay?